you pay attention to the Magic Online daily event results? Let's take a zoom in and see what we see. I know there's that needle on Liliana of the Veil. There is a Thopter Foundry in play, along with the Batter Skull and Jite, and a Visions at one. So that's scary. But it doesn't look like Paul has any cards in his hand, so he's very reliant on that Visions actually resolving. Mandala's going to activate the Nile Spell Bomb to get the graveyards out of here. The big question right now, I think, is the Sword of the Meek is now gone from the game. Yeah. Is does Jake have a counter spell for the visions? He's going to deploy a Tarmogoyf and bash in here for four. Yeah, I'm not sure how big of a deal the sword actually is because Thopter Foundry's in play, can sacrifice any artifact. And with two equipment, I mean, even a single 1 1 flyer is going to be very scary. So the visions will resolve. And now draw a card for the turn. So four fresh ones. Don't know if you found anything he likes, though. That's the question. Now, I do actually think he found a copy of Humility. Yikes. 1-1 one, one Flyers are good. Yeah. Yeah, they are. They're they're pretty good when you have that card in play. 1-1 one, one with a Batter Skull on it. Thoughts? Who wins? <laughs> Let's say. It's close. And, ooh, a Fur is pretty good, too. I didn't even see that one. Yeah. So that'll clear those up. All right. A little bit of a comeback, right? I suppose when you draw four cards in one turn, yeah, it makes you things a little easier. Generally have some options. There's a humility hanging out in the sideboard here. So, Mondello's going to play a copy of Charlotte's Agent. It's time to cascade. A couple of lands here that don't matter. There's a Deathrite Shaman. So, those are going to go to the bottom. That is a Misty. Kick it back over. Lynch is going to sacrifice Batter Skull. Get that weak stuff out of here. Yeah. I want a 1-1. One, one. Yep. And he's going to sacrifice maybe something else here. We'll see. At the Thopter Foundry, it looks like. See, he's valuing that needle pretty highly. Let's make sure that Liliana is off the table. Yep. And yeah, this turn actually gets pretty interesting, too. So he does gain a little bit of life, of course, with the Thopter Foundry activations, but this turn he can go equip GT, attack you, put two counters on, play Humility, kill your two creatures. Right. He doesn't even have to kill them because they don't do anything. Yeah, that's true. But Humility plus Equipment is actually quite the combo. Yeah, Humility is one of those cards that seems really, really powerful, especially against a lot of the decks that people like to play in Legacy. Mm -hmm. You know, you see, like, Emrakul's and Crystal Brands, and this card just kind of dominates all of them, right? So I think this card has always just been waiting for a good home. I saw Lynch almost played Humility before equipping, but he stopped himself. He said, let me make sure I do this in the right order. Get in with my Flyers. Now I'll play Humility. Now it's going to be really, really tough for you to win. Mondello does have a Jason in hand. He says, okay, get both of those things out of here. And now he's going to try to ride this to victory. Again, the Needle is naming Liliana. Now, there is one card that can actually help to get Mondello out of this, and it looks like he has it in his hand. It's Chase the Mind Sculptor. He will sacrifice the Misty Rainforest. Jake will try to figure out exactly what land he wants to get. Now, one thing to keep in mind here, Paul does have an Academy Ruins down there. So he can go get back, you know, the Thopter Foundry and kind of rebuild the army. Yeah, or the Batter Skull, you know, yeah. just like whatever you want, basically. At this point, I, I feel like he's found all the important stuff in his deck. Well, now it's time to see if Chase the Mind Sculptor is better than all. Or at least, is he better than Thopter Tokens? <laughs> yeah. So, and you see the Death Rite Shaman over there in the grip. He's going to brainstorm. Not going to bounce. Two, three. Thoughts he's Wasteland and Liliana. Wasteland could be relevant here, taking out that Academy Ruins. Yeah. Thinks it gets ready to cause some serious trouble this game. 
And Mondello hasn't played a land yet either. Yep. He ended his last turn by playing a fetch land. This turn, he searched up a land to play the Jace. But he hasn't played land just yet, and I do like playing Wasteland this turn. He also has the option of you know, playing Pluto Delta and then getting Deathrite Shaman to play, but it's not actually Deathrite Shaman, it's just a 1-1. One, one. I think that's the thing that, if you're Jake right now, you probably have to remember, is that all of your creatures just have no text. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and Charlotte's Bug doesn't have, like, a super quick clock or anything, but it wins most of its games with its creatures, okay. you know? So humility in play, especially alongside Ajite, is pretty tough to handle. Uh, so eventually, that Academy Ruins is going to have to go bye-bye yeah. at some point. It's going to go with the Thoughtseize. Because I want the Path to Exile out of your hand, please. So maybe he was sensing a little bit of strength from his opponent. Lynch will untap. Will he activate the ruins before he draws? The answer is no. Yeah, maybe if he had enough to get back Batter Skull, he would have. There's a Caracas. Chase goes down to one. And it looks like he forgot the charge counters on his Jite. Yeah, that is any combat damage, yep. correct? So now he's going to go after Academy Ruins. So now here's an activation. And can't use the Flooded Strand. He's use a different land. That's fine. Got plenty of those. Yeah, does have plenty of those laying around. But forgetting the charge counters there might be a huge deal. Going to return Batter Skull. Put that on top of the deck. Now Jake says, I'm going to Fate Seal you. <laughs> He says, yeah, put that put that to the bottom now. Thank you much. Now here's a couple of knuckleheads. But those knuckleheads get to defend Jace because those creatures don't fly. Again, humility makes those things all one ones that don't matter. So mm -hmm. Lynch is going to sacrifice his flooded strand to shuffle his batter skull back in. He's gonna go down a nine in the process. But the mind sculptor is looking to take over. And again, had Lynch not forgotten those charge counters on those Jite, those creatures would be gone. It's a Big misstep at this point in the game. <coughs> yeah, I feel like in the world of 1-1 one, one creatures, the Jite is king. It reigns supreme. But there are still good cards to be drawn, so we'll see what Lynch can find. Mondello's just basically open for a brick right now. See what the draw is. It looked like a Thopter Foundry. In we go with one. We'll see if it's going towards Jace or towards Jake. I imagine it's Jace. Yeah, I do too, and I like that attack keeping the other one back just because once your first token deals combat damage, you get those counters. You're able to take out Jake's other creature as well. Yep, two counters. Yeah, the backup that profound is actually pretty good here. Yeah, at this point, you know that there are no Lilianas anywhere. And that Pithing Needle might just be better off as a 1-1. One, one. Yeah, I think we're getting to that point now, where it's like time to, try, time to like kind of push through, trying to close it out. Yeah, I mean, at some point, that Jace has to go down. Yeah. So it's a Brainstorm. Now, there's another Jace. There's a Charlotte's Agent. And there's a Hymnotorak. Most of that stuff doesn't matter. But 
Yeah, see, Lynch has got Mondello in like this really interesting. It's not like it's not a lock. That's not the right word. But no, this is like the chokehold. <laughs> you know, it's just like I, I've, I'm sure this is a very unfamiliar situation for Jake. It's just like I don't really know. How I'm supposed to get out of this, and I'm not convinced that there's a good way to do that. So, here's a cascade. There's a goif. And just pass the turn back, and his next turn, his next, the next card on top of his deck is a Hamnatorak, which is essentially dead. So Lynch is going to sack this needle, that was naming Liliana, and that's going to give him a one-one flyer. Actually, I keep saying flyer, but it doesn't yeah. actually, it doesn't actually fly. Well, humility is in play. It says flying on the card, I it guess. Does, it I mean. does say flying on the card. So there's that. See if he has any interest in maybe sopping, sacking a Thopter Foundry here, too. We saw him do it last time. But nope, he's going to rock steady. Lynch will draw. It's a copy of Misty Rainforest. That one doesn't matter much. Yeah, I mean, I, I think Lynch is ahead here, but a lot of it is just about pacing, too, where. You're not sure necessarily exactly how Mondello sideboarded. He could have one of his two copies of Golgari Charm. And then you don't want to do anything foolish like sacrifice all your permanents, make this horde of 1-1s, one and then allow him to potentially get back in the game with a minus one, minus one to all creatures. Yeah. So here's an attack. See how Mondello wants to block. I think you at least want to trade with the token if you can. Yeah. Better to trade with a choking than a counter. Yeah. But I guess if the equipped one is attacking the Jace, you also have to block that one. Yeah, because you need your Jace so much. So I'm going to pump here. Damage is going to happen. He's going to kill this because he wants to make sure that he keeps Sky. So that's going to die, and then two charge counters are going to go on here. So slowly but surely just getting these things out of the way and then happy to press the turn back. So... We'll see if Jace can actually save Jake here. Again, he drew a him for the turn. He knew that was there from the brainstorm last turn. He could take like you know a different direction and try like unsummoning the Thopter that has the GTA on it. But again, I don't, I'm not convinced that accomplishes very much. Yeah, I mean you have that Thopter Foundry at the ready. You can make a token whenever. There's a brainstorm of visions and an agent. Well, that's a thing. We're, we're the, the combo has been assembled. Yeah, we're we're working a little bit now. Shardless Agent is a cast trigger, and not an enters the battlefield trigger. Oh, is be, it? Yeah. Oh, that's a delight. Okay, so humility doesn't stop that one. Right. Yeah, humility is a, a a touch confusing. It is. I like I like putting the Jace on top and the Vision's on beneath it. Yeah, I mean, Jake's been working to preserve that backup Jace. He actually just puts the visions on top, so. Yeah, so again, he's going to draw the backup copy of Jace in case anything bad happens. He wants to have that copy in reserve. Uh, him and death right, so no great draws there. I suppose having a backup Jace is an acceptable plan just because, like, you, I mean, you're probably going to lose it. And so that's really the only card that's really getting you back in the game. Mm -hmm. Looks like he's going to cast a Brainstorm now. And, and that's certainly true, but at the same time, it's like you need to draw something to deal with what's in play. Mm -hmm. well, got some help there. You can get a little fight with G-Charm. Yeah. Actually, G-Charm is interesting, right? Like, because it can blow up humility? Yeah. I was thinking, I was really focusing on it just being able to minus one, minus one things, and if Paul takes, like, a significant misstep, but GTA makes it so that, like, the misstep really can't happen. Mm hmm So maybe Killing Humility turns this game around? Maybe. I mean, he's already had to run a bunch of his creatures into the GTA, so, you know, we see a lot of Goifs dying, a lot of Death Ray Shamans dying. Mm hmm All right, pass it back. I think what Jake really wants to have happen is for Paul to get rid of that Thopter Foundry and then for him to charm away all the tokens except for whatever he pumps with the Jite, and then he can just unsummon that one. Yeah, bounce that one. Yeah. And that's an ideal scenario, you know? The odds of you actually getting to be in that spot aren't super likely, but... You need some sort of a misstep to take place. 
Yeah, almost certainly. Well, that's step one. Yeah. If you're Jake, I'm not saying it's missed up on Paul's side, but if you're Jake, you're going, oh, thank God. Yeah, that that is what you need. <laughs> yeah. But at the same time, Lynch is really feeling this pressure, like he can't just let his opponent keep brainstorming. Mm -hmm. You know, something has to happen. So Lynch will draw again. He's got a Misty in his hand, and he picked up a card. Didn't get a great look at it, though. He doesn't look happy about it, that's for sure. Is it a misdirection? Yeah. What do you know about misdirection, huh? Nothing. My hymns have never been misdirected. <laughs> and my gambles never discard the card that I gamble for. <laughs> And it's a wonder how I ever won any matches. There's some blocks. This is an activation. Make that count. Make that token to a 3-3. Three, three. Get this off the table. So clear up some of this stuff. Two counters are going to go on. And this is, ex as you mentioned, this is, I think, exactly what Mondello needed to happen. So now Mondello gets on tap. I think Charm is a top card. Yeah, it is, but this might be dangerous, right? Because Lynch has one card, and he might want to clear it away with him to Turok before he does anything. Ugh, yeah. And here we go. Oh, boy. Him, me. No, no. No. Him, no, him no, you. No, him, you. I would respond. Yeah. <laughs> And this isn't, you know, this isn't the end all. Cause no, you, it's not. You're still okay. You know, you, you cast charm minus one minus one. You get to kill the token that doesn't have GTA on it. Um, and if Flinch doesn't respond, then you get the other one for free. Right. I think he's gonna pump with the GTA. Yeah. And then you have to, you have to spend your turn, chasing away that token. But then Lynch is left with humility and GTA with a counter on it. Yeah. And, and then, you have a chase. Yeah. And if he bricks off, then you can actually control his draw. And then you're doing pretty good. And yeah. Batter Skull is gone. Well, Batter Skull is in the deck, I believe. Yeah, it's in the deck. Academy Ruins is gone. Yep. Sword of the Meek is gone. So let's see if Mondello sees this. Again, I think that he just has to, in this situation... Ooh. He's getting a little feisty. I mean, he still has outs where, as long as he discards the Hymn to Turok, if he keeps the Jace or the Charm, he's fine. Because he can unsummon with Jace, play another Jace, unsummon again. So he gets to keep, he loses that one. And then he's going to lose that one, and he keeps. Ugh. Those were the two he wanted. Yep. Now I think we go digging with Jace. I think you have to now. Yeah. So he didn't see the line that she mentioned. And, you know, it makes sense for him to lead off with him. Yeah, because, you know, there could be a force of will there or something like that. But now I think I agree with you. I think he does have to press a zero button with Jace. Yep, and get a little deeper into his deck. So Visions, Spell Bomb, Toxic Deluge. I mean, that'll do it. That will work just fine. Also get to suspend Ancestral this turn yep. if you're so inclined. Yep. So Jace is pretty powerful, helping Jake out of this situation. I you see how big can you make your creature? The answer is into a 5-5. Five, five. Toxic Deluge, you will pay some number of life here. So bye-bye those go. And now suspend visions and now kick it back. All right. So now Lynch has to peel. Not get a great look. All right, it's a visions battle. This couldn't make you happier. I love these games. <laughs> you know I'm pleased. Yes, yes, I do. I mean, it's a little unfair. One guy has Jason, the other one doesn't. Yeah, but. that's true. It's not for Jake. 
you know, the question is, how do you want to go about using your Jace? Like, you can just brainstorm a bunch and try to sculpt a hand, or you can just say, hey, I'm just going to, like, go after the top of your deck, because yeah. dealing your damage is probably not realistic, and the way that I'm going to beat you is by activating Jace's ultimate. Yeah. And I'm not sure how many creatures Jake has gone through, right? If, I mean, it feels like a lot. Yeah, it seems like a lot. Yeah, there's a spell bomb. But also, I think Lich, Lynch still has a fetch land in play. Yeah, he does have a Misty among those lands. Mandela's just going to pass a turn back. Lynch is going to sacrifice this. He wanted to see what it was going to be. It looks like it was going to be a Stoneforge Mystic. So that card going to the bottom. Fresh draw coming. But hey, it, it, in Legacy, and really in any format, truthfully, it only takes a couple activations of Jace before the opponent doesn't get to catch up. Right. And it doesn't really matter which activations they are for the most part, because they're also powerful. Yeah. Got a lot of good options on that one. And that Jace has been out there for, it feels like four or five turns now. Maybe longer. And if Jace is out there that long, chances <laughs> are you're not going to win. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, Jake has had to use that Jace to come back. You yeah. know, it's not like he's just been, like, putting his opponent in, in the chokehold that we were talking about earlier, yeah. right? Now it begins, though. So Lynch will draw another Visions. <laughs> there it is. Yep. My favorite. Four and three. They're all ticking down. We'll get another die out there. Ran out. Sorry. No, we're good. We are so good. Mandela's Visions is going to resolve first, though. Things keep going the way they are. And now Mandela gets to just keep taking up Jace if that's what he wants to do. And again, if I'm in his seat, I don't really shift gears here because, again, I think that dealing damage is just too difficult. Yeah. I mean, with humility in play, it seems like Jace is your win condition. Him to Torak was the draw. Just kick it back. That one got him in trouble last time. But yeah. Lynch with no cards in hand. It, it did get kicked back, yeah. in fact. <laughs> Lynch will draw. I th think that was a foundry. Of the Thopter variety? Yeah. That timely draw, if that's the case. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I mean, it might just end up being three mana, make a 1-1, one, one, gain a life. But with Ajite, that's sometimes all you need. Yep. Oh, Jake's going to look at the graveyard here, and I think this might be a situation where he says, all right, I'm going to bust my Nile spell, but I'll maybe try to draw into a counter spell if he has Force of Wills left. Because I think, I think you have to. And that's like the one card that he can draw that causes like a real problem here. Yeah. I mean, even something like an Abrupt Decay, you could really kill the Foundry, have him make the token, and then just bounce it with Jace. Mm -hmm. You know, you really don't want to have to do that, but you can't really let that Thopter just run wild. copy of Thoughtseize was the draw, so he's drawn some discard spells at the wrong time. So now we're going to the Brainstorm button again. So now he's searching for answers. So hit one is Trop, two is Delta, three is Underground Sea. Those do not help, though he does get to shuffle here. And shuffling's good, and then if he needs to, he can take another crack with that Nile Spell Bomb. Get to see one more card this turn. I mean, also... I suppose, you know, I'm used to seeing this Jace with three counters on it, right? Like, the loyalty's actually built up a decent amount. Like, he has a turn, at least. So, he's going to fetch away. And then again, Jake is at eight. Yeah, no, his, his side total's pretty low. Yeah, is it better to attack the Jace on seven or the player on eight? I mean, I, I guess, I don't know because the Thopter gets in one hit and then can potentially get bounced. There's a spell bomb activation. So Lynch's Graveyard's going to be gone here. Mystery card. Could be anything. Yeah, I didn't get a great look at that. That was a Shardless Agent. Okay. Of course you knew that. That's a Verdant. That's a Liliana. That's a Tar Pit. That's a burden. Yeah. <laughs> That's Thoughtseize. And Brick City. Yep. Not casting that one. 
So, shuffle those cards from Cascade on the bottom. Those will go on the bottom of the deck. Now, the one thing about the Thopter Foundry is just, again, he can only make one token because he's not sacrificing the GTA. So he's got to make the most of this token, and Jake's got to beat this token. All right, I have a question. I hopefully have an answer. Uh, how did it get to be the point where Paul has an Ancestral on less counters than Jake? Well, that should be on three and two. So he, can, just, he just went to his upkeep. Yeah, we can easily fix that. Those should be on three and two. And not two and one. Because Jake suspended one first. Right. So. I mean, are you sure about that? Or did Jake miss a counter? Well, I don't think you can't miss taking you can't miss taking it down. It's mandatory, so. Yeah, I mean, taking for suspend it's not optional. Like you're like it's no. a mandatory trigger. Okay. You have to you have to do that, so. So we can get this we can get this taken care of. So we're going to stop this game to make sure everything is appropriate, even though Batter Skull did just come off the top, so. Yeah, okay, so we're good now. So, yeah, that's down to, it's down to one, then we have three and two. So. Okay. Well, I learned something. Yeah, and we have a judge's confirmation on that, so. Mm -hmm. But that's actually two really good back-to-back -back draws there for Lynch, the Thopter Foundry and then the Batter Skull. Yeah, because I, I thought it was going to be a spot where, like, the Thopter gets one hit in and then just bites it. Yeah, and then just know? bounced. And Mondello didn't draw anything that matters again this turn. So he might be stuck again brainst brainstorming. All right, looks like he's going to go on summoning, and he wants to get the germ token out of here. Okay. And now he's going to suspend a vision, so that's on four. Kick it back. So it looks like, yeah, we're going to see if we can get this fixed because, yeah, the game state is definitely incorrect here. Yeah, if the ancestral suspend thing is not something you can miss, then Jake definitely had his suspended first. Yeah, he drew, he drew one first, then mm -hmm. Lynch drew his. So, yeah, his visions definitely should not be resolving first. So now we definitely have to see if there's a way that we can correct this and unwind it because the game state is definitely wrong. And Lynch has seen, like, Lynch, Lynch drew those three cards, so it's pretty easy to just. Okay, so it looks like the head judge's ruling is that the trigger on ticking down the visions can be missed. And it looks like Mondello missed the trigger for that. Okay, so I'm not crazy, I guess. Okay. And since that is the head judge, that is the final ruling on the situation. Mm -hmm. There's no switching that, so. You see the players are kind of talking back and forth about that about what exactly did take place. Yeah, I mean, Jake certainly had his suspended first, and we thought that he was going to have a big advantage because of that. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the turn where he casts a deluge and then suspends the visions, it gives him, like, a, a really nice advantage. Yep. And so now, I don't, I don't even know how he works himself out of this game now. Yeah, he, I mean, he definitely needed those three cards on the last turn. Yeah, Otherwise, for sure. Even aside from Paul drawing four cards this turn, he gets to move the Batter Skull over, hit the Jays, so on and so forth. But I 
The game is definitely still winnable. So, yeah, moving this over here allows him to finish off the Jace. Yeah. I don't know if he can overcome just, like, Batter Skull just, like, kind of doing its thing. Let's see what this is. Okay, this is just Tarpit looking to try to block. Yeah, but it's a 1-1 because humility's in play. And so he's going to use it twice, even though it is just a one toughness creature. So that's going to go up to three. Uh, I'm not sure if that's right with layers and man lands. Oh, and sure, yeah. There's a Visions. Two and three. At least Amelia is like not confusing at all. Yeah. <laughs> it makes like our job really easy. So now Lynch has like a bunch of cards in his hand to play a Flooded Strand for the turn. And now it's just, now I don't know if Vondello can get back in this game. Yeah. I mean, he was grinding pretty well for a while there, but now, yeah, you're right. It, it is probably a little too far gone. Liliana, Brainstorm. Those are steps in the right direction. I just don't know if he can overcome Batter Skull. Yeah. Does he have a comic? Does he have Pulse? No. It's it's generally just like they stone forge for it, you thought sees it. Yeah. Or just like punish it with Jace and Liliana and stuff like that. And then tempo them out while they're trying to bounce it and replay it. Yeah, but at this point, when Paul has eight lands and Batter Skull, it's very tough to beat, especially with the humility in play, which means that at no point can your Tarmo Goyf brick wall it. Yeah, yeah. I, there's, I think there's almost no way that my Delicate win this game like via damage. Like, creatures trying to block or anything like that. Like, I think the only way you can actually win is with Jace. Liliana's going to come in. It's going to tick down. Yeah, so there goes the agent. But then here comes the third ancestral in two turns. Uh huh. So here are three more cards. Maybe Lynch will just get decked. <laughs> Man, he doesn't have his ruins anymore. Yeah. So that's like not impossible. And this game has been going on very long. I mean, we're in almost the seventieth minute, and it's game two. So I can't imagine there's very many cards left in his deck. And that exile pile that Lynch is looking through now—that was his graveyard at one point—has been Nihil spell bomb twice, mm -hmm. and now they're doing a deck count. One, two, three. Don't have a great look at it. It's over ten cards. Might be yeah. right, but it's on the low end of twenty. Looks like Jake has 14 and Paul's 15. So I don't think that's a, I don't think that's a consideration. It's going to be a decay. Yeah, so it's like, okay, you've you've killed the creatures. Lynch has drawn a new hand a few times <laughs> over. Yeah, almost certainly has another Charlotte's agent or Stoneforge Mystic. But yep, there's the agent. Even if he didn't, you know, just. Bounce and replay Batter Skull is pretty good. Yeah, just being able to do that over and over and over again. There's a top. Oh, there's another agent. There's a brainstorm. Go deeper into that deck. Not even casting it. Oh, okay. Nope. That's probably smart. Yeah, I think that's smart, too. I was going to say, eh, maybe decking is a thing that could happen now. But he doesn't even like to cast a Brainstorm. Probably has exactly what he needs. Yeah. I mean, he just drew nine cards over you know, two turns or whatever. The power of Ancestral Vision. Yeah. So Wendell's going to sack a land. But I think we're going to be heading to a third game between these two. Because, again, I don't know if there's a way for Mandela to actually get out of this situation. It seems close to impossible. Yeah, I agree with you. I think there was a moment in time where that could happen. 
Yeah, I mean, any, anything could have happened if his ancestral had fired off first. Yeah. I think he may have worked his way into a decay, which allows him to kill the creature, and then, you know, the situation is completely different, but it, because Jake because Jake got forgot to take down... Yeah. Like, the Jace could potentially still be alive, still ticking up. Mm -hmm. It did take some fortunate draws there for Paul to find a Thopter Foundry and then the Batter Skull, but, I mean, that's why they're in their deck. Right. But ultimately, both decks are relatively threat light. It's just like the threats that they do have are very, very powerful. I'm interested to see if Mondello can actually like be humility for the third game, assuming we had to one. I think he can. I mean, it's it's one of those things where you might not be prepared for it, but once you see the effect it has on the game, you're just like, oh, like this is a thing. I he had to throw away like maybe six or more creatures just to Jite counters mm -hmm. but because humility was in play. Car doesn't see enough play, I don't think. Yeah. I agree with that. So it is confusing though. So it is nice that it doesn't <laughs> see play. It's like the gentleman's agreement type thing. It's like can we just not Yeah. You have to be a level three judge to be able to commentate on it. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, well I'm not qualified. Yeah. There's a him. Let's get rid of two of those seven cards. Yeah. Well, it's time to roll some dice. I know that your gambles never discard the card. When you get him, do you ever? Oh, they don't him me. No, I always him their hims first. <laughs> I mean, I thought that was the case. I just wanted yeah. to make sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, did you think that something else yeah, yeah. would be going on? <laughs> yeah. You think they would hit my cards? Okay. Yeah. I apologize. Yeah. That's disrespectful. No, no, it's it's all right. I understand. Yeah. No, like, I'm I'm obviously joking, but I'm also being kind of serious. I know you like, are. <laughs> I, I, I don't really remember ever getting him to Torok. And maybe it is, <laughs> it's just one of those really bad feelings that you just suppress. It's like, oh, I got both my lands. I lost. Yeah. That, that didn't happen. Yeah. Didn't happen. I didn't even join that tournament. I just dropped. I gambled. I had one card in my hand. I didn't discard it. So I win. Yeah. My gambles never fail. If well, I ha if my only card's gamble, it's because I'm gambling for loam. That's what, sure. I That's what I want to have happen. I can see gambling for a bad card and trying to top deck next turn. Just get know? out of your deck. I've seen Noah Wild Cranial Extraction himself to thin his deck. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's that is a delight. Yeah. I hope he won that game. Sees all the angles. No, he got crushed. Ah, but God. his opponent had more than lethal. But he, I think there was something he could have drawn. But it was still just like, oh, okay, Noah, I, I see what's going on here. I hope that was happening in limited. That's what I want. And then you're just like, well, why is cranial extraction in yeah. your deck? But hey, nice play. So it looks like some blocks and things are going to take place here. Going to go after Liliana. Yep. Up to three. This is a grinder's paradise here. I'm loving it. Yeah. I hope you're ready for another, like, 40-minute game. That's what we're definitely in store for. Yeah. I don't a, think I don't think a break maybe. Yeah, I don't think these games end quickly ever. Jake was doing a really good job at cutting Paul off from the things that he needed to, mm -hmm. like the things that give Paul inevitability, like the Academy Ruins, the Sword of the Meek, and it, it just got to a point where the equipment was too much. Yep, and Paul Lynch is going to win game number two here over Jake Mondello. So we're going to head to a third and final game. We're going to take a look at the sideboards here now between these two players. Uh, Mondello is going to be on the play. You've got that in front of you. We if saw Niles Spellbomb coming. If he wants okay. to be, okay. it is kind of okay, grindy. Okay, Just dude. throwing that out there. I think he should play. But anyway, uh, two Nile spell bombs, two Chills. Love that card. Two Disfigure, two Flusterstorm, fourth copy of Force of Will, two Golgari Charm, two Him to Turok, Thoughtseize, and a Toxic Deluge. Uh, got some some Nile spell bombs to interact with the graveyard stuff. 
Uh, we saw Mondello have Disfigure and Toxic Deluge in his deck after sideboard. And those cards are pretty good at fighting Stoneforge Mystic and Toxic Deluge, fighting the Thopters and all that stuff. Gugari Charm against Enchantments. It's got a lot of options. Okay. And I definitely know that the game's going to go a bit longer. You saw both players step up and take a break.